reign in the kingdom of men. Blessed be your most righteous name. The one who was, the one who is, and the one who is to come. The lion of the tribe of Judah, the lily of the valley, the rose of Sharon, the bright and morning star, the ancient of days. Father, we bless your name. We glorify your name. We lift you high, oh Lord. Father, we must decrease that you may increase. Father, less of me and more of you, oh God. May I disappear that you appear this hour in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I have no words of my own, oh Lord Jehovah, King of glory. Lord, I pray, Lord, this hour, oh Lord Jehovah, use my mouth, oh God, as a mouth mouthpiece oh god my father to speak to your word speak your word oh god to us this evening lord jehovah come and take control take over my mouth take over my tongue holy spirit take over my entire being right now in the name of jesus christ lord we invite you lord Come and take your place. Come and have your way, oh God. We invite you into our heart, into our body, soul, and spirit. Father, give us a listening ear. Give us the spirit of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Give us the spirit of revelation, oh God. King of glory, come and have your way. Father, open our nakedness again in the name of Jesus Christ. Open our eyes of understanding again, oh Lord Jehovah, King of glory. Because, oh Lord Jehovah, King of glory, no creature, oh God, that is not manifest before you, Lord Jehovah. Everything is naked before for you, oh God. Father, King Lord. of your word will come forth, oh God. I pray that you will open the, the secret, play, oh God, Jehovah, the darkest secret of the wicked ones in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And mm -hmm. Father, King of glory, open our understanding this hour in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Let your word, oh God, my Father, break us and remold us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. May your name be glorified. May your name be lifted up. May your name be highly exalted. Thank you, everlasting Father. For in Jesus Christ's name we pray. As we Amen. begin, God, we begin with you. Amen. We begin with you. Oh God, Amen. Jehovah, King of glory. Come and take control. Holy Spirit, come and take control. Thank Open you, the Lord. heavens with the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 I'm happy to be in your presence. We thank God for this great opportunity. I want to thank my daddy, Daddy Jeff, for giving me this great opportunity. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Who am I that you are mindful of? Blessed be your most holy name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our topic, by the grace of God, is what are you seeking? What are you seeking? I will first of all, I will reach from Matthew. Matthew 6.33. Is it popular, please? We all know it. But let's go. As the Holy Spirit will be leading us. I think my voice is loud enough. Even me, myself, I can't even hear myself. I don't know. Oh, I you're good. You're good. You're okay, good. That's, that's <laughs> the if we don't hear, we'll come in. <laughs> okay. Praise God. Mm. I read from the book of Matthew, Matthew 6.33. It's a popular place we know. He said, but seek you first the kingdom of God. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things shall be added. You're muted, ma. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you hear me when I read? Yeah, Matthew yeah, chapter six, three. Okay. Okay. I read again in Jesus' name. He said, "But seek ye first the kingdom of God, and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you." The Lord, you know, 
It's a popular verse we all know. We can even cram it without opening our Bible. But I don't know why the Lord is pointing us to this very place. What are we seeking? What are we really seeking as children of God? What is that thing that is more important to you? What are we seeking? Are we really seeking as, as a child of God? Okay, sir. As a child of God, what is your goal as a Christian? What is your goal? What, what, what are those things that is, more, that, is, that is more important to you? The kingdom of God or the things of this world? That is what the Lord is asking us, you and I. He said, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And every all these things shall be added to you. Why did the Lord say it? He said, because there are so many things we worry ourselves about. You know, there are so many things we, we are seeking for. We neglect those things that is more important to our soul. There are some things that we seek that, 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 doesn't, that, doesn't, that doesn't count, you know, all those things, all those things. It's not that I'm not saying that uh, we shouldn't, um, we shouldn't uh, worry or not worry, but we shouldn't care about ourselves in this world. As long as we're in this world, we, we have need. There are some things we have need of. But what are the most important thing you need to seek as a child of God? The most important thing you need to go for. You know, when Jesus was teaching them, he told them the need to seek first the kingdom of God. That is the first thing as a child of God, you know, being born again, you are born again. Because when I was, I was going to church for so many years, I don't know the difference between born again and going to church. I thought, I thought maybe going to church is enough. Begin to do some, you know, live my life anyhow. On Sunday, I dress up and go to church. I don't know the difference between born again and just being a Christian. Because if everybody, even native daughters these days, they are Christians. Praise the Lord. Even native daughter will tell you that they are Christians. So there must be difference between a born again child of God and a, a church goer. Because being born again is, you know, denying yourself from so many things, separating yourself from the world. Because the other time we have, uh, we have this, uh, we have uh, the program we had the other time that says that uh, the test was taken, I think the, the test was taken from the book of uh, First Peter, First Peter chapter two, verse nine, that God has called us out, out of darkness to show forth his praises, you know? So we need to shine as star, you know? What am I trying to say? Being born again is denying yourself from so many things, separating yourself from the world, seeking those things. I, I don't know if time will permit us, let me quickly read. Let us go to the same Matthew, Matthew 16, 24. Praise the Lord. Matthew 16, okay. Let me not, let it not be that I'm only, I'm the one preaching reading. If, if you are there, amen. 16, 24. Yeah, true to 26, man. Yeah, true to 26. Okay. Matthew chapter 16, verse 22 to 24. Is that correct? No, 24, true to 26. 24. Hallelujah. Amen. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For, what, for whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. 26. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Praise God. Thank you, man. This is what Jesus Christ was saying. He said, if you must follow him, you must deny yourself from those things, from all the things of the world, all these things. You know, the Bible says we are in the world, but we are not of this world. What are those things that is more important to your soul? 
those things, because that is what Jesus Christ was telling us, that we should seek those things that is more important to our soul. Those things. Don't kill yourself. He said we shouldn't kill ourselves. We shouldn't kill ourselves from the meat that perishes. But those things that is more important to our soul, what are those things that is more important in your life? That is representing the, you know, the, the representing God. What are those things you have play, put in place of God in your life? He said, we should seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. If, somebody, if people want to quote the Bible, they don't talk about the righteousness inside. Seek first the kingdom of God. That means so people believe, they understand it to be uh, go to church. But the Bible says righteousness. Righteousness, in my own word, I, what I, I understand it is that righteousness is like having the image of Christ, stamping the image of Christ in your heart. Desire to be like Jesus, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. His righteousness. And that is the purpose why Jesus came. To be with the father. Because the father wants to enjoy the fellowship with his children. Because he's tired of hearing the voices of angels. He's not, uh, uh, sorry to use that word, it's not that like he's tired. You know, for example, when you, what I mean by that is that, for example, we are uh, 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 Daddy Jeff. You are, you know, you you are at home every every morning. You go to work. There is a robot, a robot that is, uh, you know, whenever you come, is always uh, 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 um, saying, "Welcome, sir. Welcome, sir. Welcome, sir. Welcome, sir." Every day, "Welcome, sir. Welcome, sir. Welcome, sir." Every day. Sometimes you'll be tired of it. Even sometimes maybe you don't even remember that that, uh, that uh, robot is there. Sometimes you just, this thing is disturbing yourself. Maybe you are talking, this thing is disturbing me. You just want to remove it. Or maybe sometimes you want to wake up, you want to wake up in the morning. Alarm just rang. For me, when I, sometimes I want to remove that alarm, but though it helps sometimes, if I want to wake up, I set my alarm in the morning to do my uh, devotion, you know? What am I trying to say? There are some things, sometimes you just get tired of it. You say, mm, this thing is disturbing me. Let me just remove it. You get it. So that's how it is. That is the reason why he says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. To, in other words, you know, because God enjoy fellowship with us. God enjoy fellowship with us. And that is the reason why he sent his dear son, you know, to reconcile us back to him. And now, that God have made the provision, make everything available for us, make it easier for us to have fellowship with him. What are those things that is more important to you? Everybody wants to go to heaven. Nobody wants to die and go to hell. Native daughter wants to go to heaven. But what are the requirements? Praise God. If you must, he said, if you must follow me. And Jesus said unto, unto his disciples, if any man will come after me, if you must follow me, you must deny yourself. You must deny yourself from some, some certain things. You must deny yourself and take up your cross and follow me. It is everyday journey and follow me. You know, let me not um, talk too much before because I don't know how many minutes I have. So I want us to read um, Philippians. I want us to read Philippians. This one, I want us to read it from the beginning to the end so that we'll get proper understanding. Praise God. Are we together? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Philippians 3. Amen. Verse 1. Amen. Philippians 3, 1, I read. Finally, my brethren. Rejoice in the Lord to write the same thing to you. To me, indeed, is not grievous, but for you, it is safe. Continue, my, we want to read it to the end, please. Hallelujah. Amen. Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the concessions. For we have the circumcision which worship God in spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more. 
circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But what things we are gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ, yea, doubtless. And I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering, being made conformable unto his death, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the death, not as though I have already attained, neither were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I can't not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press towards the mark, for the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. And if anything ye be all the wise minded, God shall reveal living this unto you. Verse 16. If nevertheless, we are to, we have already attained. Let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. Brethren, be followers together of me and mark them which walk so as ye have us for an example. For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly and whose glory is in their shame. Who mind earthly things? For our conversation is in heaven. From whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. 21, the last verse. Who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Amen. Amen. God bless you, ma. Thank you very much. You know, Apostle Paul, we all know the story. We, know, we all know how this man was converted. We all know, you know, because he was, he described himself. He said he was a Pharisee. He knew the law. He was zealous but not according to the knowledge of God. He thought he was doing God good, not according to the knowledge of God. He was pursuing shadow. Just like some people are still doing today, pursuing shadow. Some people are just religious, but you know, religious, not according to the knowledge of God. And I pray that God Almighty will give us proper understanding. You know, this man, he said everything, all these things he won't. We all know that he was a lawyer. Am I, am I correct? Praise God. If we are together, please, I want to hear so that, <laughs> you know. Okay. So he said he counted all those things. Hallelujah. Amen. He counted those things but lost for the sake of Christ. He said in verse, um, in verse 10, he said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death. He said that I may know you. Are you seeking to know God? Are you seeking, what is your desire? Sometimes I will, you know, when I pray, I will say, God, you are my heart's desire because you are my heart's desire in the sense that, Lord, I desire to be like you. I want to be like you. That is all I want. That is all I want because I don't need anything in this world that would, you know, that would, in fact, you know, if someone have a clue of her fire, you would not, you wouldn't want a, a wish your enemy to go there. You wouldn't wish your enemy to go there. Lord, how can I be like you? I want to be like you. You are my heart desire. You know, everyone have a desire. Lord, you are my heart desire. I want to be like you. I desire to be like you. I want to talk like you. I want to love like you. I want to do things like you. That is seeking, you know, you are seeking the kingdom of God, seeking the kingdom of God, you know, transforming to become like Jesus Christ. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. It didn't end there. He said, and his righteousness, 
is righteousness and all these things that you are looking for. The Bible says in the book of uh, Psalm 24 that the earth is the Lord's and its fullness thereof, the word, and they that do it herein. Everything belongs to God. I say to myself, I always want to use myself as an example. Lord, you are my city, great reward, just like the way God told Abraham. Lord, you are my city, great reward. Imagine your father is the owner of everything in this world. What is that thing that you, you know, I mean, why will you be killing yourself to, to have everything? You know, if only we can seek the face of, I mean, seek God, seek heaven first before any other thing, that God will be our first priority. We want anything you want, we want to do, do things you ask God, Lord. I mean, I, this, thing I, this thing I want to do, is it pleasing God? This thing I want to do, this, we want to put on clothes, these clothes, is it, is it to glorify God? Anything, every daily, you, say, you, are, you are to carry your cross and follow him daily. That means you are no longer on your own, you are no longer yourself, anything you do must please him. Just like Apostle Paul said, he has become a prisoner of Christ. Everything you are doing, you, are, you, 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 know, you follow the leading of the Holy Spirit, you follow the leading of God. This thing I am doing, is it pleasing God? Is it glorifying God? The way I talk, sometimes when I talk to somebody, I will come home and I, I, will, I will think what I will, you know, I will, I will come home and sit down, begin to think what I, if I, if I spoke to the person well, if I speak to the person well, if I, the word I say was it and define you, you know, maybe sometimes Holy Spirit just say, ah, you didn't, you shouldn't have said this. You shouldn't have said this next time. That's how we grow. No man is an island. That's how we grow. So, is your life glorifying God? Anything you want to do, do you ask God, Lord, should I? You want to do anything, Lord? Should I do this thing? Or if I do this thing, how will God see me? How will Jesus see me? Seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. The righteousness inside, that's what we need. Seek you first the kingdom of God. Fine. You desire everybody wants to uh, 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 enter the kingdom of God. What about the righteousness inside? Well, how are you living your life? The righteousness inside, inside the matter. Let me, let me use, <laughs> you know, the righteousness inside, that is the cocoa. How are we living our life? What, is, what are those things that we are doing? Before you do anything, do you seek the face of God or you just carry yourself and begin to do things to, to impress people? Are you, are you impressing people or you are impressing God? That is the question the Lord is asking us. Are we doing things to impress people or to glorify the name of our Lord who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light to show forth his praises? Are we really showing forth his praises? Tell me where we are in the part, all over the world, in the, every part of the world. We are, you, you, you can see how good, that God is awesome, that everything God made is perfect, that God is wise. You can see now we are from di different countries. We are connected together. Technology. We are connected together to so have fellowship with, with, each, with each other. God has made everything available for us. Everywhere you are, are you representing Christ in that place you are living? Are you representing Christ? Are you an ambassador of Christ? A representative of Christ? How are you living your life there? What are you seeking? I am not saying that we shouldn't, uh, you know, care about, uh, of course, of course we need to work, we need to, uh, you know, get things done to, you know, in order not to be, be you know, be, be a borrower to go and steal all, you know, all of that. We need, we need to work with our hand. We need to work hard so that we will be able to provide for our family and those, those, those who I need. But our first priority should be God. That, you know, heaven is our goal. That all those things we are looking for, all those things, where we, where we, where, as we are, as we are, we, are, we care for ourselves, we care for our family, knowing that God is our Father, God is the one that make all those things available. Because 
what I, I if if somebody somebody that is lying in the hospital bed will not be thinking about how to make money, how to build mansions in in, in Africa. Somebody that is lying on in the on the hospital bed will not be thinking on of how to you know carry the most expensive bag. Almost they are just crying, you know, like God. If I can have a, a second chance, if I just if I can just have my health back. That is what they are. They are, they are saying. Now that is the time we have all the strength. Now that the Lord is showing us mercy, what are we saying? What are those mm -hmm. things that is more important to us than God? The Lord is asking us to leave those things, to seek him first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. This place is a popular verse that, you know, we quote it, we are too familiar with it. Honestly, we are too familiar with it that we have not really, we don't really take time to, to really understand. Because imagine, the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. He said, because you are a different person. You are a peculiar people. The Lord have chosen you. If you read, Ma, please, let us read 32. Matthew 6, 32, ma. Amen. 32, I read. For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. Praise God. What makes you a different person from the people? That you are not living your life recklessly. You are not seeking, you are not covetous. You are not seeking for these things of the world. He said, all oh, these things, everybody, I want to be the best. I want to be the most beautiful mansion. I want to do this. I want to do this. I'm gathering, I'm gathering. And you are gathering and gathering, working tirelessly, building house, houses in Africa, buying cars and all of that. And you are here. I think that was a mystery, I don't know. Yeah. Walking like an ele elephant, eating like ants. Those people, all those things you are, you are, you are walking, you are killing yourself, or other people are enjoying it. He said, all those things, for all these things do the Gentiles do seek after. For after all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly father know those things you are in need of. God Almighty, no, even before you ask, you know that we need those things. Okay, ma, it's all right. You know that we are in need of those things. He said, but Jesus Christ advised us as a born again, as a Christian, as a child of God who wants to go to heaven. If heaven is your goal, he says, seek first the kingdom of God. Mm, fine, everybody is a Christian and his righteousness becoming like Jesus Christ. Becoming like Jesus Christ. Let us read uh, uh, um, Romans 12. Oh, this place is a very popular place. We are familiar with it too. Romans 6, 12, uh, sorry, Romans 12, verse 2. Or oh, let's read from verse 1. Let's read 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this word, but be, re but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Praise God. Thank you, my God bless you. You know, and be not conformed to this word. Many of us, you know, it is unfortunately many of us. I'm not exempted. Many of us have, you know, we conform to this word. We seek after the things of this word. We neglect mm -hmm. what God has said. We neglect, you know, the things of God and begin to pursue shadows. All those things that will perish here on earth. All those things that he said, be and be not conformed to this word, 
but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Anyone, see, beloved, anyone that is in Christ Jesus, if you are born again, you have not lost the sense of this word. You still have a long way to go, honestly. Because Jesus said, if, you, if any man must follow me, if you must, have, must follow me, you must follow me. You must deny yourself. You must separate yourself. You don't see the things the way people see. You don't reason the way people reason. You have lost the sense of this word. Heaven is your goal. Heaven is your goal. You transform your mind. I mean, be a transformed by the renewing of your mind. That ye may prove what is that good. It is, if your mind is not renewed, your mind is still after the things of the world. You cannot please God. You cannot please God. That is it. If your mind is still after the things of this world, you cannot please God. All those places we are reading is, is, is familiar, very familiar. It's very, you know, we, we know it, but please. First John chapter two, verse 15. Hallelujah. First John chapter 2, verse 15, I read. And so love to not. Sorry, to 17. Ma. Okay, to hallelujah. 17. Yeah. Hmm. Love not the word. First John chapter 2, verse 15 to 17. Love not the word, neither the things that are in the word. If any man love the word, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the word, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the word passeth away, and the loss thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Praise Amen. God. Amen. You see? He said, for all that is in the world, there is nothing in the world. Lost. You can see what is happening all over the places today. Lost of the flesh, lost of the eyes, and pride of life. It is not of the Father. The Bible made it clear. Let us not be too familiar with the Bible. We just quote it. No. The Bible made it clear. It's not of the Father, but of the Word. Many people are just, you know, call me, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian. They are very far from God. They are far, 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 far from God. He said, and the Word passeth away, and the lost thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. He that doeth the will of God abided forever. All those, you know, people are killing themselves. As a, a child of God, if you do not, if you, for you to really prove, you know, we need to like take word at his, uh, take God at his word. For example, you are passing through, you know, I was telling some, uh, some people a few days ago, I said, look, you know, it is time for us to really take the word of God serious, because why? For example, when your mind is renewed, when you are really following God wholeheartedly, if you are not following God because of uh, what you want to get, maybe you come to prayer, you just want to pray so that uh, God will favor you, or maybe you just got born, uh, you, you, you are coming to church or coming to service, coming to this kind of gathering because of what you want to get. You are not born again. You just have, because all those people, when they get what they want, they will not come again. They will not come again. Even though if, if they are even coming, the word of God is not entering their ear. It's not entering, they are not gaining anything, but just because of what they want to, they want to get. If their prayers are, are answered, then they are gone. But as a child of God, as a child of God, you are seeking God first. God is your number one thing in life. God is your first priority. I told, I said, anything you are looking if you take God as, uh, uh, you know, if you are really following God, use this scripture, this very scripture we, we, we read, uh, Matthew 6, 33. Lord, that, that, that situation you are going through, Lord, you told me 
that I should seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And every other thing will be added to me. If your mind is really, if you are really following God, you challenge God with his word. Lord, this is your word. You said so. All those things I have really, you know, I want to seek you. All those things, I, I've left the things of the world. I have left the world. I, I you know, I, 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 I've decided to follow you. And every day of my life, I, I desire to be like Jesus Christ. I am willing to do everything you want me to do. If God will not answer that prayer. If God will not answer your prayer, if you challenge God by that words and say, God, because your word says, and all those things you are showing your heart, that yes, you are still really following God, not because of what you want to get. Not because of the things of the world. Maybe some people, you are looking for the fruit of the womb. Eh, okay, uh, yeah, I just want to collect prayer and then leave. And another thing that makes people to feel comfortable that they are still with God, you know, God is a just God. God is a righteous God. God, you know, God can never lie. You know, understand what he says, what he says he will do, he will do. You know, yes, what he says he will do, he will do, because God says we should bring all our substance, our tithe and offering to, into, into, his, into his storehouse, that there may be meat in his house. And if we, you know, anybody that is doing that, your pain, like pain of tithe, you know, when you are far away from God, because a lot of people do it, but not with a perfect heart. They do it to please the pastor. They do it to please people. Yes. So that in, to be comfortable, to, to make, you know, to let the pastor know that, oh, they are serving the Lord. Mm -mm. If you are doing anything you are doing that is not in, that you are not doing it with a perfect heart, it's not acceptable. God, but God Almighty will play because he said, he said it, that he's going to bless you. If you pay your tithe, he will bless you. But do we really take time to ask, Lord, is my way right with you? How am I in, in your presence? Am I really holy before you? Am I, uh, 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 even though I'm not 100%, I'm not there because Apostle Paul, where we read in uh, 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 Ephesians, you know, even though you are not there yet, even though you are not there yet, Phil, uh, sorry, Philippians 3, even though you are not there yet, are you, are you pressing on? Are you striving to, to be like Jesus Christ? Are you desiring to be like Jesus Christ? Lord, how am I in your presence? Who am I? Am I, is my spiritual state? Is my spiritual life okay? How am I? What are we seeking, brethren? What are we seeking? Are we really seeking the kingdom of God? Are we doing things to impress people or to impress God, to glorify the name of the Lord anywhere you are? What are those things that is more important to you? What are those things that you take most that is, you know, you, 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 you place in the position of God? What are those things? The Lord is telling us today that this scripture, we should take it seriously. It says, seek for the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added to you. He said in verse 12 in Philippians 3, he said, not as though I had already attained. Either we are already perfect. He said, but I follow after if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. He said, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things, those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. What is your goal? Pressing on. Putting those things behind you, putting your whatever you have acquired, your education, your work, all those things, putting them behind you. I'm not saying you should forget when nobody should work or it, it, it is bad. No. But what the Lord wants us to understand is that number one thing, God should be our number one priority. 
number one thing, God should be number one, number one in our lives. The kingdom of God, seeking the kingdom of God, seeking to, to, to please God. You, you know? He said, I, I press toward the mark, verse 14, I press toward the mark of the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. In verse 14, I read again. He said, I press towards the mark for the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. The high calling. We are, we are, God has called us into his light, into his marvelous light to show forth his praises. Are you pressing forward? Are you pressing towards the mark of the price of the high calling of God? Or you want to acquire, you want to, you want to gain the own word. You want to gain the own word. What are those things? In that same Matthew, if you read from verse, uh, Matthew says, if you read from verse, uh, and, uh, from verse 19, he said, lay, up, lay not up yourself, uh, sorry, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moot and roost doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moot nor roost doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal. He said, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Yes, there's no, you can't serve God and mama. In, in verse, uh, in verse, uh, I read verse 24. He said, no man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mama. This place here is not talking about devil. He's talking about the things of this world. If you read from verse 19, you will understand what Jesus was talking about. You know, if, if people read this place, they would think that, oh, God is talking about the devil serving the, the idol. No, it's not. It, God is not talking about idol here. Jesus wasn't talking about idol here. If you read it very well, I pray, read it in your own time. Let the Holy Spirit expand it to you so that you, get, you understand it more, more than what I am explaining now. Mamo here is money, the things of this world, fame, to make me all the things of this world. You can see, he said, therefore, say not to yourself, say, say unto yourself, he said, therefore, I say unto you, take not no thought for your, for your life, what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body. What ye shall put on is not the life more than meat and the body than remnants. I just want to read that place so that you will understand what Jesus Christ was talk talking about in 20, verse 24. He wasn't talking about serving idol, serving the devil. You can serve two master. He said, love not the word. Love not the word. If you you will understand why Jesus he said, love not the word, neither the things that are in the word. Because if you are in love of this word, if you are in love with this word, you cannot please God. You can't serve two master. It is either you are for the word, you follow after the word, you follow after your, you know, yes, you follow after the word, or you serve God. You said, no, I want to seek for the kingdom of God and his righteousness. The theme of this program is to take heed. Take heed. Don't, don't be comfortable and say, because yeah, I'm, I'm a Christian, I come to service, I attend all the services, prayer meeting, prayer meeting I'm there, night VG, I'm there, Bible study, I'm there, and all of that, that you are comfortable. No. You need to know. You need to ask God, Lord, who am I? How am I in your presence? Am I really serving God? Sit down. Am I really seeking the kingdom of God and his righteousness? It is not enough to come to the presence of God. It is not enough to be born, to, be, to say I'm a Christian or born again. It's everyday journey. You don't get born again, leave it there and begin to attend services and you don't care about, about you know, you, you don't just care or you, you, you are not bothered about what you will do 
in order to become a perfect person, a perfect Christian, just as God wants it, is righteousness. You are not bothered about to becoming like Jesus Christ. It is not enough to just get born again and be coming to services. No. You need to be bothered about becoming like Jesus Christ. Becoming like Jesus Christ. Living your life for God. Denying yourselves. Denying ourselves, rather. Denying ourselves from those things, from the things of this world, from all that things. And press towards the the price. Wishing for those things that are more important, putting those things behind, pressing towards the goal, desiring to be like Jesus Christ, desiring to be perfect, to be a perfect, is there, which must be perfect. Nobody, they will say nobody is perfect. Who told you? The, he said we should be perfect even as our Heavenly Father is perfect. There's no two ways about it, and it cannot be otherwise. We must be perfect. That is, that must, you know, that should be your, your, your cry every day. I want to be perfect. I want to be like Jesus Christ. God has made everything available for us. He has, he has prepared the way. He has made things so easy for us. He has given us a new covenant. A new covenant, the covenant of Jesus Christ, of the blood of Jesus Christ, has cleansed us, made it easy for us because we are not able to, 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 to you know, to, 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 to obey all the commandments, all those things. But Christ has come to redeem us from that cause. So we need to desire to be like Jesus Christ. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added to you. So don't kill yourself. Don't be running after. Don't, don't be running after scatter like the Gentiles in verse 32. He said, for after all these things, you need to be different. You don't think like the Gentiles. You don't run after the things of this world like the Gentiles. Like the people of the world who do not know God. Mm -mm. He said, you are, you are different. You are a child of God. Your heavenly father knows what you are in need of. He knows all those things. He care for you. He know the thought he thinks towards you. They are thought of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. What is your expected end? What is that expected end? To be with him in heaven. To give you an expected end. At the end of all, of it all, is we serve the Lord wholeheartedly. We deny ourselves. From those things we you know we used to do. We don't do we do them no more. We we are just Lord, I want to serve you. So anything I do, if God is happy, I'm I'm satisfied. When God is happy with what I am doing, I'm satisfied. If God is happy, if God is okay, opinion of the world, it does not matter. As long as God is happy with what I am doing, then I'm okay. The joy of the Lord is my strength. So that should be our desire to be like Jesus Christ. God should be our first priority. Number one thing, before you do anything, before you go out, you want to do something, you say, God, you commit this thing into, the, into God, Lord, is this thing glorify you? Holy Spirit will definitely speak to you that no, you cannot. But a lot of people today, they want to be here, they want to be there, they want to put their hands in so many things. Whether it glorify God or not, they don't care. Whether God is pleased with it, they don't care. So how can you say you are a child of God? Your heavenly father before you, you don't have respect for him. Before you do anything, you just do things on your own. We don't do things like that. Even though you are the most uh, anointed person, Moses was, 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 was the meekest man, as God described him. But anything he wants to do, he doesn't do things on his own. Anything he wants to do, he asks God. He was even asking God, the meekest. God said in me, the meekest. There was a place, there was a, 
a time when Moses, what we are telling God, I think in Exodus 33 or so, that he wants to, Lord, show me your way that I may know you. When I got to that place, when I read that place, I, you know, show me your way that I may know you. I said, ah, you still want to know a, a man of, you know, a man like that, that God said is, is the meekest man. He still want to know, he still want to know, know God. Yes, Exodus 33, verse 13. Exodus 33, I read Exodus 33, verse 13. Okay, if you are there, Ma, you can read if you are there. Amen. Exodus 33, 13, I read. Now, therefore, I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, Show me now thy way, that I may know thee, that I may find grace in thy sight, and consider that this nation is thy people. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Ma. That I may know you. upon all those things. I thought, because I, yeah, Mo, Moses, all those things that God made him to do, he didn't, he wasn't, he wasn't yet satisfied. He would have said, oh, because uh, God called me the meekest person, God see me as the most holy person, the, the, the one that is capable that, that to lead these people. So I should begin to do things on my own now. I should begin to, you know, take decision on my own without asking God. I should begin to do things on my own. No. But you still want to go to God. Because God, if, without God is nothing. He said, I pray thee, if I have found grace in that side, that show me the way that I may know you, that I may know you. How many of us are seeking to know God, to know more about God? Are we satisfied the way we are? Me, I'm not satisfied. I'm not satisfied. I want God. I want more of God. I want more. I want to become like Jesus Christ. Imagine myself, you know, be transformed like I'm. Demons, if, you, if our ways are right with God, if our ways are, you know, perfect with God, if you obey the word of God, you are obeying what God is saying. You are, your life, in fact, you can't just do things on your own. You are, your life, you know, you, 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 when somebody is imprisoned, you know, you are captivated by the spirit of God. Yes. The spirit of God have captivated you. Demons will be afraid of you. You don't need to be, be casting and bounding all the time. Because all the, since we have been casting a bounding, demons are not dying. They don't die. But if you are living a perfect life, God is the one. God is your covering. Your, you, you know, your heart is pure. You are following God wholeheartedly. You deny yourself from so many things. God is, is your protector. All that demon said to, uh, on, that, on uh, that day, I think in, in the book of... Uh, in the book of uh, out of apostle and told them, he, said, he was telling them, he said, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. Who are you? Who are you in the sight of God? Even demons know that this one is powerless. You know, demons know Christians who are powerless, who are not living right with God. They know who are weak, those who are weak. They know who, those who are not following God with a perfect heart. They, they, they come to church, they follow God because of the things they want to get. So we need to seek to know God and tell God, continue to ask God to show his way. You, cannot, you, you can't say you have arrived. Nobody have arrived. You need to ask God, show me the way. Like Moses, anything you want to do, you ask God, what are you seeking? What are, you, what are we seeking? Eunice, what am I seeking? That is the question. I want to seek God. I want to seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Now the righteousness will be inside, not be the cocoa. The righteousness inside, righteousness. It is not enough, you, you, you know, say I'm, 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 a, I'm a born, I'm a child of God, I'm a Christian. Then what about the righteousness? 
people from people people from the, the you know from the from the uh, uh, the bed of immorality go and lift up their hands in the church and singing to God. People from the bed of immorality begin to blast in, in devil's tongues. People from the bed of immorality and adultery begin to perform signs and wonders, and you are carried away by those things. Don't be deceived. God can never be mocked. All those things, their end, all those people, their end is coming. Before I want to go to that place again. Permit me, I will soon round up now. God bless you. Thank you for your patience. He said uh, in the in Philippians, I will read again in Philippians 2, verse 17. He said, Brethren, be followers together of me and mark them which works, which work so as ye have also for us an example. Verse 18, it says, For many work of whom I have told you often, mm -hmm. and now tell you, even weeping, that they are the enemy, enemies of the cross of Christ. He said in verse 19, whose end is destruction? Mm -hmm. God cannot be mocked. Whose end is destruction? Whose God is their belly? You can see, he said, whose God is their belly? What is God in your life? Is it your belly, your phone, your television? And whose glory is in their shame? Who might earthly things? Who might earthly things? He said, we. He said, for our conversation is in heaven. From whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Brethren, what are we seeking? Who is your role model? Who are you following? Christ or the world or the people of the world? Let me tell you, let me tell us something. God created create us uniquely. Jesus Christ should be our role model. He said, look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Everything you do, you look unto Jesus. You don't look at anybody. Because so many Christians, they do things to impress people. Don't be like those people. Do things, let your moderation be known to all men that God is at hand. Everything you do, be a representative of Christ. Don't, be, don't, don't, don't desire to be like anybody. Desire to be like Jesus Christ. Let Jesus Christ be your role model. Because if that person you, you are trying to be like, you don't know her, li her life, you don't know his life, the kind of life they are living. A lot of people are wallowing in sin. You don't know what they are, what, how they live their lives inside. God sees everything. I cannot see you, you cannot see me. You don't know how I live my life. I don't know how you live your life. Why will you desire to be like me? Why will I desire to be like you? No, let Jesus as brethren, serving the Lord together. Serving the Lord together. Praying to know God. Then our spirits be a witness that we are the children of God. If you are seeking God with wholeheartedly, with all your might, <coughs> You don't need any uh, native doctor or any pastor to tell you this is this, what is right and what is not right. The Holy Spirit himself will teach you because you are falling, you are des desiring to be like Jesus Christ. Look unto Jesus, not to any man. He said, for those people, who, he said, whose end is destruction. Those people that deceive people, that begin to they do things and to impress people, to be, Think that they are right with God. They are deceived, deceiving themselves. Don't be deceived. Let Jesus Christ be our role model. Let us seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. That righteousness is my concern. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. I'm a born, I'm a, I'm a child of God. The righteousness every day. Righteousness, desire to be like Jesus Christ. Seek here for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, desire. 
Praise God. I closed my Bible. So the Lord is Amen. asking, what are we seeking? Thank you, Jesus. We want to tell the Lord, Father, give me the heart to know you. I want to know you. I want to know you experientially. I want to know you personally. Lord, I really want to know you. Maybe you are, you, you are far away from God, or maybe you are with God, but you want to know more. You desire, you are, on, you, are you know, you want more of him. You want to tell the Lord, Father, please give me the heart to know you. I want to know you better. I want to know you experientially. I want to know you, Father. Father, in the name of Jesus, oh Lord, my God. Father, give me the heart to know you, Father. Lord, give me the heart to know you. Father, give me the heart to know you. Know you, Father. I want to know you personally, you oh, Father. Lord, I want to have a relationship with you, Lord. Father, I don't know you. I don't know you, Lord. Jesus. Lord, give me the heart to desire you, Lord. To desire you, yes, Father. I want to be like you, Lord. Father, reveal you yourself to me personally. Lord, reveal you yourself to me clearly, oh, Lord. Jesus. Help me, Lord. Father, help me, Lord. Give me the heart to know you, Lord. Give me the heart to know you, Father. Give me the heart to know you, Father. Oh, Lord Jesus Christ, I want to know you, Lord. Father, Lord, I want to know you. Father, help me to know you, oh God. Your greatness, your holiness, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, help me, Lord Father, give me that in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Beloved, I want to quickly tell us this. Jehovah, Jehovah, serve in vain. I want to quickly tell us this. Please, you know, I understand that a lot of people they want to, uh, you know, when when you say a, a lot, I need an encounter. They thought maybe just like the Apostle Paul met the, 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 with the Lord on the way, or you want to hear that audible voice. It's possible, but the Word of God, when you read the Word of God and it prints your heart, you have just had an encounter. Mm -hmm. Praise God! You have just had had an encounter that mm -hmm. from that day your life is not the same again. Now you want to tell the Lord, Father, I want to encounter you. I want to have mm -hmm. an encounter with you. I want to Lord have an encounter with you. I want to have an encounter with you, Lord Jesus. I want to have an encounter with you, Lord Jesus. Lord, my father, 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 Lord, I want to encounter you, Jesus. I want to encounter you, I want to encounter with you, Lord Jesus. I want to encounter you, Lord Jesus. Lord, 